Hello and good afternoon. This is Mike Rosa, Coach Star Video. Um, I would like to thank you for uh, attending today. Before we get started, if you do me a quick favor, and if you will find the questions box that is on your go-to meeting or go-to webinar screen, you should have one that says uh, questions. And in that question, you have the ability to connect and we can communicate there. So if you could just give me the name of the city that you're calling from on, in that question box, that'll let me know that we are communicating. That way when we get started, I don't wanna get too far down the road to figure out we don't have audio. Okay, perfect. Picking you up loud and clear. So the way this works is you will be in listen only mode throughout the duration of this presentation, but uh, feel free to ask questions. This is a makeup webinar for last week. We had some technical difficulties when we were trying to connect remotely, but I'm here on site today, so hopefully we won't have any of that. I'm gonna go into the test drive, and then at the end of that, I'll go back to the presentation. Or if you feel like you don't want to go back through the presentation, then you can drop off at, off at that time, and I'll, I'll let you know when we're to that point. But just as a recap, we talked about um, three of our product lines last week. We talked about the IP PTZ with the auto tracking. We talked about the 360 camera, the 12 megapixel version of that. And then we also talked about the um, high definition HD over coax product line. So these three that you see are the representative of those. So we are going to go into what we covered last time was the product offering, the, the 30X PTZ, the 360, the 20X, benefits of each, which we will cover again today. We'll go back through that, but we'll do it at the end. And then we got to the test drive comparison, and that's where we uh, hit the glitch. So I apologize for that. I'm gonna make up for it today. I have everything up. So then we're gonna look at the tools in this test drive, and we're gonna look at all the three, the way that we play back with the tools and do live with the tools. So. This will be the this this was the most exciting part of the demo in my opinion last week and uh, unfortunately it it didn't go well so I'm going to jump into what we call Starnet and I'm going to pull up my screen and we're going to dive right in all right so for those of you that aren't familiar with the interface this is called Starnet this is our user interface for all our CoStar products whether it's IP analog, HD over coax, doesn't matter. It's all incorporated into this VMS. And this VMS communicates with the recorder and then to the cameras. So I can log in a thousand and twenty-four recorders into this system and control up to 64 cameras per recorder. And those recorders are listed here in the left-hand side of my screen. I have uh, all my devices, right here this is the one we were looking at last time and let's see let's go to our live screen and let's go into the live part and start from where we left off so this is the 30x ptz and this is in the live mode as you can see we have tabs up here at the top these tabs are detachable so I could take this screen and move it over to a secondary monitor. I could take another live screen, break it apart, move it over to a, another monitor, and I could build basically a video command center here with live video, playback, health checks, and so on and so forth. So we're not gonna go into that in depth at this presentation. We do have a StarNet presentation that we focus on all that. That's the next month's uh, presentation. We'll be talking about this version in detail. But what I wanna to highlight today is in a live screen, regardless of the camera, whether it's a fixed camera, a PTZ, a 360 camera, we have a toolbar that is present at the bottom of every screen. So when I roll my mouse down to the bottom, you will see this pop up. And at the bottom here, I have a series of tools. The tools will be highlighted if they're available for the product I have. So no matter where you are in the viewing screen, this toolbar is accessible and it's very easy to navigate. So in my case, this is a PTZ. I know that because I have a P up here in the right-hand corner. And I also have this joystick at the bottom and that's highlighted. 
So with that joystick, I can turn on my PTZ controls. So unlike the days where you had a joystick controller and you were forced to drive with the with a game stick type controller, now the fluid motions just from operating on a mouse and the tools that are available really make the PTZ very easy to use without that at all. Um, so going across here, we're going to talk about the slingshot in here in just a second, but I have a zoom in, zoom out, open iris, close iris, basic functionality, focus far, focus near. And I have the traditional directional buttons like you find with a lot of the systems out there. You can move to the right, to the left, up, down. They're kind of cumbersome, kludgy, because you are waiting. You don't know exactly when to let off the button or when to push the button again. So you are navigating in kind of an awkward manner. With the CoStar in this device, we use what's called a rubber band, which is a icon you see on the screen. All I did was center my mouse anywhere on the screen and then move my mouse to the right or to the left. The further I move away from the circle, the faster the dome goes. So if I go out to a point, I can navigate back. The PTZ will travel at the speed of which I move away from the circle. So the further I move, the faster it goes. So for example, I wanna move over here and look at the adjacent building here. Now I'm just gonna simply use my roller ball and I'm gonna roll in to this scene and I'm going to move around that area. So this is a 30X PTZ. If you can see in the upper right-hand corner, I'm using half of that right now. That's a 15X zoom in and I can navigate around the parking lot. So this is great if I'm tracking a person or I wanna slowly walk behind them and allow the PTZ to move just very fluidly and very easily. I'm sure we'll have some motion here in just a little bit. So that's called a rubber band. There's also a tool in here called a slingshot, which when I click this button, this is a tool that helps me center the screen very quickly. Cause a lot of times you wanna use the pan and tilt and zoom simultaneously. So I may want to be zooming in and moving the dome at the same time. So this process allows me, as you can see, now I have a view window that it lets me take a closer look. For example, if this white car over here is what I'm interested in, I want to zoom in to look at this car. I can simply zoom over, put my dot on the car. I can see it in the large button. And when I let that go, my screen is now centered to that object. What that does for me is it puts me into an area when I start to zoom now, I know I'm right smack dab in the center of the screen. So I'm gonna turn. Now I wanna recenter that image. I'm gonna hit the where the driver sets, that's gonna center me and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. But now I wanna look at the license plate. So I'm gonna pull this over where I can see the license plate in my object window. I'm gonna release that, it will center me and then I'll scroll with my mouse in tighter. So I'm at 30X right now, so that's my tightest shot. And now I can scroll back and I am dead center to that object. If I wanna take a closer look back and I can zoom back in. So I have that slingshot and I have the rubber band option here. So when looking around, if I want, I wanna get a closer look at the dumpster, I just release on it, centers me and then zoom right in very quickly, get right onto the object. It will focus up for me. So you can see all the detail. It's really hot out there in Texas today. You'll see the, you can almost see the heat coming off the concrete. So that is one of the live tools. We also have like traditional domes, the preset options. Let me actually move this over here so that this is very close to the home position. Okay, so here I am. I also have presets, just like I can set them and I can go to them. So I'm gonna view my preset. This is the preset that I want is the home position, click okay. And it's gonna go back to that home position for me. These presets can also be set to events that the recorder or the camera sees. So if you had a, let's say a hard contact on a door and I have that preset set for preset two, when that alarm contact goes off, the motion or the command for the preset two would be sent to the PTZ and it could 
zoom in on one or move between multiple doors. So we don't have anybody moving out here in the parking lot to track, so we're going to do that through the playback. We'll look at some of the playback recorded tools there. So I got a set preset and a review preset, and then I have a one push focus. So for some reason, if I go into a manual focus, I want to take that out of focus manually. Let me go back this way. And let me zoom in on an object. Let me zoom in over here. This is a, a one push is a, is a option that's in a lot of the fixed cameras that have um, auto focus or one touch focus capabilities. If I take this one out of focus, well, let me see, let me put this on. Let me take it out. I can hit the one touch and it will automatically force the focus to go and, and stop. So those are the tools that are readily available for you in the user menu. So what makes this very easy is are the same tools that you have with your fixed cameras and your 360 cameras. So let's quickly go over and look at the contrast between this, which is an optical dome, 30X, and let's look at our 360 camera. So Effectively, we're covering a wide area. We talked about this in the presentation um, last week where you have areas that as you get moved further away from the cameras, you start to lose the pixel range. So this is really more of a tighter application, a room like this. I'm getting a 360 degree of this particular room. Now, the difference being that my toolkit now, I have this fish ID warping tool instead of the PTZ tool. When I click that, now I have access to all my tools for this camera. And the most recognizable is the EPTZ. This is something that puts this almost into a PTZ type format. So I'm going to use my mouse and I'm going to scroll into the image. And I'm going to use the rubber band just like I did with the other PTZ. And I'm just going to zoom around this room. So if there's something of interest that I want to look at, I can use my rollerball and scroll in. Now, the difference here is I'm only using digital zoom. A big difference here too is I'm still recording that entire room. So I've not left everything in that room is being recorded regardless of what I'm looking at. Whereas with the traditional PTZ we just looked at, what you see is what you get on the screen. That's what you're recording. So, but I'm also spreading my pixels into a very tight pattern, which gives me a tremendous amount of detail when I'm looking at an object. Whereas a 360 camera like this gives me the full range. I could see everything that's going on. My situational awareness here is outstanding. I have the ability in this function to go in and look at this on the fly in different ways. So I can go from this traditional view to a panoramic view. Now I'm looking at 360 degrees all in one panoramic view. I can also put that into a panoramic with multiple tiles below. So I can zoom in tighter on the different tiles. If I want, I can move around within each one. So it does give me a lot of tools to watch this room from the screen. Now I also have, let me go back to my traditional main view. I also have a viewfinder tool, which helps me realize what I'm looking at. So this is what the different tiles on the right-hand side are looking at when I move this tool over. If I wanna look at that desk tighter, I can just move this. I want this one to look back at the door and zoom in to the door. And I want to see this one. I want to see this guy. I want to see it in tighter. I want to scroll down. So similar tools and where they're placed, but they give you a lot of different views. So a lot of times in lobbies, um, entrances, um, vestibules, areas where you have a lot of people congregating, this is a great tool for that. And the tools are right here. So. <clears throat> Let me make sure I've covered 
everything on this screen. You also have presets too, so if you like the preset notion where you can take and lock everything down into a preset, you can do that as well from right here. So that's the way this operates, um, the, the compare and contrast the two. They're both very valuable tools, very different in, in the way that they, they capture their images and the way you can zoom in. In playback though, Let's face it, that's where a lot of applications take place, where you're looking for something that has happened, you're going back in, and you want to take a closer look. So let's go ahead and remove this. I'm going to take all these cameras off, and let's go into playback. All right. So here's the two views that we had. Let me, I'll cue this one up right here. Same two cameras, but now we're in the playback mode. So let's start with the PTZ, 30X PTZ. The toolbar that we had here at the bottom, very similar to what we had with the other dome. Now, in this case, I don't need, there's not a tool that I need because I've recorded what you see is what you get. So there's nothing else I can do here other than optically zoom. So I do have that ability to digitally zoom in tighter and back up and I have a viewfinder right here in the bottom right hand corner but now the object is finding something that happened or where motion was triggered or we have tracked something so the way this works and there's there's seven different ways of searching for video to get to the same point there is simply dragging and dropping so this goes across the system no matter where you whether you're looking at fixed camera or a PTZ, that's all gonna be the same. Where I have blue stripes, that's where continuous recording's taking place. The pink stripe is where motion has occurred and it's been um, triggered either faster, slower, or a different rate of speed for the different color. So that's what they mean. Now I can simply go to an exact time date if I want, type that in. If I wanna go to the 21st, at two o'clock, I can type that in and go directly to it. I can also use fast forward rewind tool. So I have a virtual jog shuttle here, whereas I move it to the right, it goes faster. If I move it to the left, it goes backwards. The further I move it to the right or the left, the faster it goes. So it's great for fine tuning. I also have what's called a thumbnail search which is, is, a, is a very valuable tool in my opinion, especially when I'm looking for something that may have moved in the parking lot. For example, this white car that's right here, I wanna know when that car moved. I'm gonna go back and actually I'm gonna set this to a one hour interval. So what I am looking at, let me just go up just a little bit. And this is every hour, it is taking a snapshot of video across the board here. So let's drill into this one. When I double click on the object, then it drills me in even tighter. So now I've just gone from a one hour. Let me see where I can find, let me find that car. There's the car right there that I was looking for. I wanted to know when that moved. So now I'm going to take this into, let's go into 10 minutes. Okay, so the car got there within these 10 minutes right here. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna double click on that one. And now I've gone into one minute increment so I can look quickly across the, the strip here and find out when that car, so that car was the, within there within a minute. Now I can go to my jog shuttle and back up. There, there it goes right there. So that's how quickly I can get. So I'm gonna just speed through and there's the car coming up and parking. On the flip side, if I wanted to know when that end, I could just, I can continue on through the film strip and find out when that car moved the same case. Here is an example of a guy uh, backing up here. I don't know if it, before I get into that, let me show you how I can search by motion events. So I wanna know what things triggered this camera to track something. So I'm gonna go over here to my search button. 
I'm going to select the camera that I'm curious about. I'm going to go first to last and I'm going to do my auto tracking. If I want to know if I ever had video loss or if I want to know if a trip zone, all these different matrices, I want to know about the tracking. So I'm going to hit that. So now I've got a list of things that have been tracked. So this right here, this has been forced to track something. Let's go ahead and push play and let's see what, yeah, I have, there's a carpet company around here that is dumping. So this goes on all morning, usually in the morning hours where you got a lot of people dumping trash next to us. So it sees the motion here. It is moving and zooming in tighter, not to the point where I've lost anything, but it is watching the people as they move and it will get closer shots of these people. Now it's already, it's decided to follow that car. Let's see what it tracks back. Now it realizes it's gonna go back to that object and track it. So normally at a far away shot, you're not gonna get a license plate or even have a shot at getting a license plate. Whereas this, I have the ability and I will zoom in to points where I can identify people and I can identify the cars. So let me, actually I'm gonna pick one here that was a, I believe it was a truck that we were tracking back. So I'm gonna show you the go to time go to and I'm going to go to the 30th today at 9 10 and let me take that back so there was something here that it sees the car moving so it's going to track Now, one of the, the user-defined settings is how close you want to get to an object that moves. So if you want that object to appear very large in the scene, you can set it. I have it mid-range here, so it's not going to go in very close. It's going to zoom in um, when, it, when it sees something. It's going to try to get the biggest screenshot that it can. But you have the option of how closely it will zoom into an object that it sees that moves. So we do have a lot of action going on over here. So the camera will do its best to try to capture everything that's moving in and adjust, but I have it set to a very um, unsensitive setting. Let me see, let me... Gonna look at to see if this has some some movement as well. All right, well, I think you get the point. It's going to follow. It's it, I think it just it just track that, and it will follow it as it moves. In the presentation, I'll show you some good examples. Um, of it tracking people that are walking across the parking lot. If you didn't see that on the last presentation, but it does see the motion, it's decided to follow this truck and it will continue to center and focus on that. It sees that car. So it does the best it can about determining when motion is going on and trying to track as much of it as possible. Okay, so in, in the sake of time, I wanna keep moving here. Let me go ahead, I wanna go and look at the, let me stop this. And I wanna look at the 360 camera. So the thing about this camera now is Unlike the PTC we just saw, there's nothing I could do other than digitally zoom into the frame. And I don't have as much digital zoom as I do with this camera. So now the toolkit that I had in the live view is also available to me in playback. So I have this large scene, as you can see. 
I can click on my EPTZ and I can drive into this image and look around just like I did in the live shot. So if I were doing forensics or watching people move around, I want to get a closer look, I have the same toolkit in playback as I do in live. So I have the ability to zoom around this image. I could also use the tools to give me a main plus six. So now I've got these side bars that I could look at, maybe that a little bit closer, move this one around. I want to get this over here on that desk. And then I want to look what's going on in that refrigerator so I can zoom into the refrigerator tighter. So this comes out in this fashion. I can do this in playback and I can also use this if I am giving this to the police department or handing it over to FBI, whoever, they have the ability to use this same video, just like you see right here. So the toolkits that are portable with this give you that ability as well. I have all the same tools, my viewfinder, my um, guide here to tell me what I'm looking at, We're going back and forth. And then I also still have this bar. So if I want to know when this guy set back down, I can scroll through until I see him in the scene again. What are these in? These are in very small increments. Yeah, one minute increments. So I would scroll through here and then I would eventually see him in the screen. I could drill into that image and look at it closer okay so that's playback on the ptz with the the auto tracking and the 360 camera those are the two i really want to focus on today and compare and contrast the differences of those two um, i will uh, go through the powerpoint the high level if you have seen that um, let me know if you've already seen it and you don't care to go back through it again, then just put me in a, a comment in there. Um, no worries, but I do have the the presentation here. This is where we're going to switch over and go back into the presentation. So let me cue this up. All right, so I will go through this presentation and we'll wrap up. This will take about, I'll try to get this done about 15 minutes or so. So with that being said, <clears throat> here's the things that we, I'm gonna go ahead and put these up here since we've already gone through these, but this is the price we're gonna talk about, the 360, the 30X and the 20X um, HD over coax or TBI technology. We're gonna look at that one. So this is that 30X PTZ that we looked at with the auto tracking. This is the, the base model. It has, it's two megapixel. It's um, has an SD card that's supported, has great backlight and great low light capabilities. It does very, very well at night. It's weatherproof rated. It's an IK10 rating on the impact resistance. It does include a heater out of the box. So that heater can be powered either with PoE plus or 24 volt AC. So you have either or on that option. And this does have the motion tracking capabilities. And this um, is the first camera that we've had that had that auto tracking built in. And the model that it replaced was the, the 18X model. So now we've gone to the 30, the PoE plus, which we talked about, and it is H.265. So this will save a tremendous amount of storage space especially on a PTZ where you do have a lot of movement. So every pixel is being refreshed every time it moves. So they traditionally take up a lot of video space, but with the H.265, that helps save a lot of that. We saw that on the live test. I'll, I'll go ahead and skip this part here today, but this is the, the 12 megapixel 360. We offer this in a five megapixel and a 12 megapixel. I'm a big fan of the 12. It's just giving you more pixels to work with. It also is better at low light and backlighting conditions. So this one is a, a more technically advanced model than the five. So if it's a price that you're looking for, then the five, if in some cases, if it's a controlled environment, 
perfect choice, but for the 12, for the little bit extra, this is a very good choice for um, high megapixel density. It is outdoor, it is IK10 rated, PoE and 12 volt DC, so this is a great choice for that. And this is where we talked about the situation awareness that we had on the test drive. So if I have the ability to record everything, no matter where I'm looking in the frame, this is the, the, a great choice. Because if I'm tracking a person across the field of view and I can watch them go from right to left and I can watch the entire pattern that they, they travel, could zoom into them along the way. It's a very powerful tool for watching someone in a large area where traditionally I could have as many as four cameras covering that same area. So, you know, I may have a person walk out of here, the path they follow then is this way on that camera, and then they pop up over here to walk in that door. So you can see how complicated that could be, where with the 360, it really helps take care of that and puts it all into perspective. And we touched on this when we compared and contrasted the two. Why the 360? because I'm getting everything that the camera can see, it's always being covered, so there's no spot that I'm not recording 100% of the time. There's no moving parts, it's all solid state. And you're getting the, the recording regardless if it's zoomed in or out. So PTZ is what you see is what you get, but you do have the tighter pixel range when you zoom in and zoom out. So that's the big difference between those two. In this case, it's a five or a 12 megapixel, they are H.265, so 12 megapixel is not as bad as it used to be as far as taking up a tremendous amount of hard drive space. It's pretty efficient here. And possible cost savings when you put these together. Um, you know, in, instead of using four cameras, just using one, so possibly save money. And this is an illustration of what we talked about. Um, where I have detect, observe, recognize, and identify. So in a digital recording, that's how we determine if we can get the shots that we wanna get. For example, if I just need to detect that somebody is there or there's movement, I can get by with as few as eight pixels per foot. So looking at the example, I can tell there's a person down there, I don't know who he is, but I can tell there's something moving. And they observe, I need to have a tighter pixel range so that I can kind of see that that's you know looks like a brown haired male um, can kind of tell and then recognize so now if I knew this person I could recognize him if I knew that was Jim I, yeah that's definitely Jim I can recognize a license plate and then if I want to identify 100% I definitely can do that with 70 pixels per foot so what that means to us is the way the 360 camera works. The further I get away from the camera, the camera's in the center, I have a 14 foot ring around this camera that will let me see that identification resolution. All the way up out at 62 foot, I'm only seeing the recognize or detect at this point. So I know if someone's moving around this ring. So the five megapixels giving me up to 62. If I go to 80, that's with a 12 megapixel. So you can see the difference here, how much more span you get, you get larger circles around this camera for better identification. So it's one of the tools that we use for the 360. And then lastly, this camera we didn't look at, but it operates just like the 30X PTZ the way it operates up, down, left, right. But this one, because it doesn't have a lower bubble, incorporates infrared. So now I have a flat surface that I can project infrareds that follow my camera lens. So this design, what it does well is allow you to use infrareds. It also allows you to look above the horizon. So if you have the camera mounted at a lower point, say like at or above, just slightly above a garage door, eight, 10 foot up in the ground. Well, when you try to look out straight, the zoom lens is gonna cut into the top of your dome. So you're gonna only be able to look out and down. The tighter you look out, the more your camera's gonna drop lower. This camera overcomes that. It 
as it moves further out, it will still continue to rise up so it can look out further. But it doesn't do a good job as camouflaging where the camera looks. So these designs are typically used for outdoor applications. Indoor applications, people tend to gravitate more towards the lower bubble where it does camouflage the camera view. But this is an HD over coax. So this camera will control and transmit video and can be controlled over the coax. So like coaxitron back in the Hytron days, this is the same concept. Um, makes it very easy to take over an existing um, installation where you haven't run data wires. So all you need is coax and power, and you can pop this into any situation where there's any dome. And to give you an illustration of that, if you have an existing analog system, cables already run. So we already know there's power out there. There's video cables run back to the recorder. There's existing power wires already run. This could be over a distribution center. So it could be thousands of foot of this. So if a customer just wants better video, wants higher resolution video, they don't have the budget to pull these cables out. Really all that needs to be done is the old recorder replaced with a CoStar recorder. This is our um, ET version here. It does analog and HD over coax. So if you don't even change a single camera, you can put this in, take over all the video existing, and let's say we want to put in one PTZ. You just put that PTZ in the place of the camera you remove. You might have to bump the power up just a little bit. It just depends, but you may or may not have to do that and use your existing coax cable. Now I can control the PTZ and record the video immediately without having to rewire anything. And for that matter, I could go through and change any or all of those cameras over to um, the HD over coax over time or all at once. So that's what is very appealing to that technology in, in that dome. All right. And you still only have a single ad address to the on the WAN side, so just so you know. So let me just pop through this part right here, and let's go ahead and wrap up. I know I've we've gone through the test drive, and happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, here is the CoStar video. Uh, these are sales engineers. These people know this product very well. If there's any questions that you have or want to get more information, any of these guys are easily contacted at, at the information right here. Uh, let me make sure I don't have any questions or if there are any out there that I, that I address them before we wrap up. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my information up here as well. I'm Mike Rose, I am the Vice President of Sales for CoStar Video. So this is my direct line at the office and my cell number as well as my email address. Feel free to shoot me a note ask a question, we can get you any pricing or any application work you need, um, be happy to do that. So I will leave that on the screen. Again, I appreciate you uh, giving me a second shot here and, and getting a chance to look at this in more detail. Be happy to uh, go into this in more detail. If you have questions, just reach out to me and uh, I appreciate your time. So we will uh, conclude. I will stay on for just a minute here just in case you have some questions, but um, if not, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.